Alright, this is going to be about the serial connection that needs to be made for the pickaxe. The pickaxe uses a serial form of communication. In serial form, the data is sent as a series of ones and zeros. So we can have a single line of communication and then what is being sent are a series of ones and zeros corresponding to the data that needs to be transmitted. So at the very very simplest form we simply need a single wire along with a signal ground. So we would need to be able to transmit data from one device and that would be connected to the pin that would be receiving the data. We would also need to have a signal ground connection because when we are sending logic levels we can need to make sure that both devices are using the same reference for the ones and zeros. So in its simplest form we would have two wires. The transmit of one device and this would be our computer because we're going to be transmitting a program to our microcontroller that would be connected to the microcontroller's receive pin or connection and then signal ground the signal ground. Now if we want data to be able to go in both directions then we would take the computer's receive data connection and we would connect it to the microcontroller's transmit data connection. So with this connection data will be flowing in this direction with this pin data will be flowing in this direction. So our microcontroller can speak or talk back or send data back to our computer. So this would be our computer connection and then this would be our microcontroller connection. So we need to figure out what pins to use on our cable. All right. Well, we're using a cable that's referred to as a DB9 cable. The reason for that is if we look at the end of the cable, it is shaped like a letter D. That's the D part. It's a nine because there are nine connections, five on one row, and four connections on another row. So a total of nine connections or pins, so a DB9 connector. So we would need to figure out which pins to use out of those nine. We only need three of those nine. So we need to figure out which one is the transmit line, transmit data, which one is the receive line, and which one is the signal ground connection. Well, if you type in DB9 pinout in Google or some other search engine, you'll find those specifications. And it happens that the receive on a DB9 is pin 2, the transmit is pin 3 and the signal ground is pin 5. So now we got to figure out which pins those are on our connector. What you'll need to do is look very very carefully at the end of the cable. There are numbers printed on the end of the cable identifying which one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Let's say in this example the way that we're looking at this connector this is pin 1 and this was just pin 5 and that this is 6 and then that this is 9. So now we know we need to have this pin actually let me use a different color. We need to be using this pin and this pin and this pin. Well we still have an issue or a problem because very likely the wire coming out of our cable has a number of different conductors. So how do we know which one? There's one, two, three, four, five, six. 
let's say we've got seven, eight, nine. So how do we know which one is pin two, three, and five? What you would do is you would connect up your meter to one of the pins that you are looking for and you would set it for continuity. Usually that is going to be a diode symbol on your meter. It may have some indication that it outputs sound. So you would have one lead of your meter connected to the pin. You would then take the other connection of your meter and you would probe each of the wires. So you would connect it to this wire. If it doesn't beep, that's not the right wire. That's not connected to that pin too. You would move on to the next one, next one, next one. Let's say it beeps on this wire. We now know that is the wire connected to pin two. We would want to remember the color of that wire, or mark it in some way. We would then repeat that process. So we would need to take and adjust our meter so that it is on now not pin 2, but pin 3. And we would repeat that process, moving the other probe of our meter to each of the wires until we find it. Let's say it's this one right here. So now we've identified pin 3. We'd remove our meter from pin, we've already found 2, we already found 3, we'd move it over to 5. And we repeat that process. And let's say we find it right here. So now we've identified pin 2, 3, and 5 on this end, but we've also identified the wires that are connected to each of those. So we know that pin 2 is our receive. We would need to take pin 2 and make sure it's connected to the transmit part of our microcontroller we would take pin 3, we've identified it as this wire, that's our transmit, we would want to make sure it's connected to the receive connection on our microcontroller. And then pin 5, we've identified that would need to be connected to our signal ground on our microcontroller. Alright, so now we understand a little bit about the basics of serial communication and a DB9 connector and identifying the different pins on that cable.